What's happening, everybody? J.R. Raymond back again. Um, honestly, uh, this video is interesting. I've been getting some messages from some people <clears throat> asking me what I think of uh, this Chris Beans guy talking about swag and their equipment and what he thinks of it and him, I guess, bashing on them. And honestly, I had no idea it was even going on because I don't know who Chris Beans is. But uh, I went and took a look because people kept messaging me about it. So I am actually going to uh, watch this video with y'all and hear what he has to say. And I'll respond to some stuff. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I'll give you exactly my thoughts on the entire thing. And uh, we'll see if he has any merit in what he's saying or if he's just being mean. I guess we'll say, but we'll take a look here in a minute. Stay tuned. Now I'm chuckling a little bit, not because I you know, think the whole thing is funny. I'm chuckling because it, the in the entire industry, we're such a small industry that I think it's hilarious that people go out of their way to bash brands and stuff like that. Um, you know, especially somebody who's supposed to be a part of, uh, I guess, represents Bowler's Mart, I guess. But I mean, whatever, more power to them, I guess. It, it is what it is. But um, he can, they're allowed to do whatever they want. They freedom of speech, they can say whatever they want. That's not a big deal. But let's take a look at... Uh, Let's take a look at his video. I'm going to share my screen here so you guys can see exactly what's going on or what I'm talking about. Uh, 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 let's go with this one right here. All right. So let me make sure we're up here. Yep, we're good. So let's go ahead and give this a play and we'll follow along and I'll stop it and make comment as I feel I need to. So let's see what he's got to say. What's happening, everyone? Chris Beans here with Bowler's Rant, bringing you some updates on swag bowling. Don't forget to hit that like. Now, I should say that um, I don't know for sure if this guy is with Bowler's Mart. I thought I thought somebody said he was. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's on his own. I don't know. I don't know who he is. So somebody said he was with Bowler's Mart, but whatever button and turn on those notifications i know some of the swag guys were thinking i was gonna you know because i was hinting that i was gonna do a video on them and i am doing that but it's not gonna be a good one because most of everything that swag makes is the hottest of diarrhea so we are gonna get right into it so i posted something uh yesterday because people been hitting me up and i said i heard swags releasing some new ugly bricks all right so i mean the first thing i'm gonna say is it's pretty evident he's got some opinions based on something that happened. Because I don't know why you would have this opinion if uh, either that or he's, he's just trying to generate some talking points or trying to generate clicks or I, don't, I really don't know. Um, it, I guess it's a good idea. I mean, I'm not a big fan of talking trash about other companies, but I mean, if you're trying to generate clicks, that's one way to do it is to... <laughs> You'll get a lot of the swag staffers coming to their defense for sure. And I got a bunch of reactions that were hilarious. Bright colors, crazy names. Um, then someone was trying to hit me up on my spelling, which that's true, but they also have bad spelling, so whatever. Um, they're going to look like the Grizzly back in the day. Bad shelf appeal, okay. The swag boat anchor would be fitting. I want to come to that later because that part I am going to comment about. Uh, sharpen your bits and get the backups ready because it's time to drill some swag balls. I, and they're talking about some cores that are sparking. I guess they do that, you know, more density sparking cores. Never heard of them. I thought that was hilarious. My good friend, Sean Ely is, you know, I've known him for a while. Um, when did they stop? <coughs> and so on and so on. And then someone posted a video of it sparking. So I'm going to play that real quick. So apparently... When you when you get into this, right? Maybe I can make this a little bigger. There it is. It's sparking. Like literally. Yeah, I gotta say, I've never seen that. Now, the one thing I do notice when I do drill a swag ball, they're very tough to drill through. They're much di they're different than any other bowling ball. Uh, the inner material and the core, they just seem more firm, more dense. So maybe uh 
mean, obviously you can see there is sparks coming on here, but I wonder what's causing that. I wonder if there's, because I know like, uh, what was it? Legends, they were famous for what they tried to say was uh, diamond particle in their covers and whatnot. So, I mean, you just, you'd never know. It's sparking. I have never seen when you sand a ball that they spark. I mean, that just doesn't look good at all. Okay. So I thought that was funny. Now back to the main story here. So one of the storm staffers that I know, and I have protected the name so nobody can see this because I do have journalistic integrity. Now I think it's funny. He goes and he protects the name here, but on his next video, which we won't even go watch that one where, but he just goes ballistic, just making fun of swag and everything else. He don't protect those names, the swag staffers and stuff. He blasts them right out front. So I don't, I'm not so sure about the journalistic integrity there. I was in San Antonio, and he said, should I stop by the Swag HQ and say hi for you? And I said, yes. He said he walked in, and I quote, because you're looking at it right here, I walked in wearing a storm shirt, was asked to leave, didn't even get a chance to say anything. And I'm like, ha, 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 yes. I wish he had recorded it. And he says, bunch of douchebags for sure. And I would agree. I mean, really, Swag, you can't let a guy walk in with a bowling shirt. What if you didn't know he was a staffer? What if he was just somebody that was enthusiastic for bowling? You're just going to kick him out? I don't think. I mean, I kind of agree with that. If that happened the way they said to where he just walked in and they kicked him right out, I think that would be kind of shady, not good business. I'm not sure why they would do that. So I would agree with that. I think that would be pretty crazy. It's just like if somebody walked into Turbo's headquarters with a vice shirt on. I mean, they're not going to kick anybody out. They may give you some crap about it, but they're not going to kick you out. I'm going to kick out someone wearing a Brunswick shirt because they know it's about bowling. And I don't think Brunswick's going to kick out anybody wearing a Storm shirt. But maybe I'm different. Any of you Storm Brunswick guys, if you've been to headquarters, I'd like you to comment on this. Let me know what you guys would do if somebody walked into the headquarters wearing a different shirt. Would you kick them out? Is it that sensitive? Maybe you are. I feel like it's, you know, a little bit of le poo poo. So, yeah. Um, I just thought it was funny because this guy's a storm staff member and walked in and got kicked out, which means that the sensitive swag guys just couldn't handle it. Oh, all right, moving on. Uh, I got this other tech, uh, the other message. Some turd just brought this in. Uh, this guy in a pro shop, and I'm looking at it. Some graffiti ball. Um, you know, I've seen worse pores, you know, but this logo. It's baby diaper, not looking that great. And this is the closest I think I've ever been to a swag ball in my face because I try to stay away like the plague. Yeah, see, and I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't think the logos are really that bad. My only issue with the logos is sometimes they're too big. They are too big on the bowling ball. They need to be smaller. Um, and some of the pores are actually really good. Like some of the bowling balls, they are really good looking bowling balls. So I'm not, I don't see eye to eye with them on that. I think they actually do. Uh, there was the most recent, I think that new bomb, the green one, that one looked like a turd. I ain't gonna lie. That one wasn't very good looking, but he makes fun of in the other video, he makes fun of the new graffiti, uh, tracker about the colors and stuff. I love the looks of that ball. I think that one looks great. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of the ball reaction, but I love the colors of the ball, you know, and, and most of y'all know when I do these reviews, I'm always going to be honest. And my honest opinion of the swag equipment is they have some holes to fill for sure. I think they have a lot of really good stuff to play straighter with their balls read the middle of the lane really nice and they smooth out the rest of the line. They're great for tougher conditions when you're playing straight. I think they still are struggling with the bowling balls that allow you to go further left when you need a shiny ball that's going to pick up down lane. They've just, they've had, they've got a hard time. They've had a hard time figuring out the motion, just like every single company has. They go through the growing pains trying to figure that out. That's the hard part. Getting bowling balls to read earlier and be smooth and strong. That's the easy part. Every company for the most part, although I will say Storm had a really hard time with a lot of their strong, maybe, maybe it was just me. I don't know, but I didn't like a lot of the Storm balls that had their strong, big, strong covers. Uh, I think their core cover combinations struggled when it came to uh, their big, strong, solid type covers. So, you know, most companies are pretty good at that. I think Storm has done a good job lately. I've liked a lot of their solid covers now, but everybody has their issues. You know, everybody's chasing that Storm type of down lane motion. That's why the brands of Brunswick has just come out with that HK22, which is really close and really, really good. You know, I love that motion. I think swag is just a little behind the eight ball when it comes to their Pearl stuff. I'm just being honest. So I think they need to improve there. I think they are trying. That's why they're coming out with more and more ASIM Pearls and stuff, trying to 
uh, get them into the staffer's hands, trying to get more feedback, trying to do what they've got to do to be able to compete on that level. And, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that they, as far as I know, they don't have any PBA staff guys because it's, it's tough to compete out there and bowling balls mean a lot out at the, on the PBA tour. So if you don't have a good, well-rounded group of bowling balls that are going to allow you to do what you need to do, um, you're in trouble. I think st- uh, swag would be smart to try to pick up some staffers that would, uh, you know, allow them to throw other companies as well as their balls, you know, that would kind of like what big bowling did when they first came out, because they only had like four bowling balls for Marshall uh, and Simonelli and some of those guys, like let them throw those balls, get those balls in their bag, but let them throw other companies as well. Um, the problem is a swag has enough balls to fill a bag, they just don't have the areas filled that they need to fill. But anyway, I'm going on a little bit of my own rant here. So let's uh, let's continue on. Um, but yes, and I said gross, and they also said can confirm ball spark. So I guess this is a thing. You know, they might as well just make a ball called the swag spark because that might actually sell. You know, they could use it as a selling. And to be honest, we actually sell a lot of swag bowl balls on uh, the BowlerX.com channel. So uh, I'm not – maybe – other maybe i mean pro shops it's tough to sell them in the pro shops i don't sell very many in the pro shop because of uh the lack of distributor you know they don't use distributors and stuff like that so and they are expensive that is a downfall there so if you're going to be more expensive you got to make sure your bowling balls are up to snuff um i will say back in the day the legends brand that was more expensive. I had a lot of guys that really liked those bowling balls. The owner of the bowling center that I worked at, he loved them and he sold the crap out of those balls uh, out of his pro shop. So, you know, there's just, there's, you've just got to have a certain, a certain look, a certain style, a certain type of motion to be able to sell at that kind of a price point. So um, they're going to have to make a few changes to, really be able to hit the pro shops and do what they need to do, or they're going to have to really um, find some, find some good pro shop staff to be able to sell their equipment a little bit easier. Apparently they need all the help they can get. Um, all right. Now someone else hit me up because all the swag stuff has been happening the last couple of days on my, my feed. And he says, Hey, have you heard of these balls? I'm not going to make them much bigger because they're just not even worth looking at, but it was this. See, and I think he goes a little too far with, you know, bagging on them. Now you made your point as far as you don't like the way they look Uh, at this point, it's pretty obvious. Now he's just looking for clicks. He's just looking for laughs and stuff, which again, it's fine. It's, it is what it is, but if he does represent a company of some sort that makes it eh, not, not too good. Bag top dog, the dynamite blaze, which just looks like garbage. The fantasy epic, I mean, what is this, like fantasy star from 1990s video game shit? I mean, this is just the terrible. Um, the graffiti art. You know, <laughs> sorry, I keep interrupting here, but uh, let's be honest, with the amount of bowling balls that's come out in the last 50 years, we're running out of names. So, I mean, you can call names garbage all you want, but trying to come out with unique names that haven't been used before, very, very difficult. That doesn't look good. Very busy. And with that really horrible. We're going to come out with the Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar Ball or something. I don't know. <laughs> Go. Um, the Incredible Phenom. Later in life, I'm going to come back to this. I Because this might actually be the best looking swag ball I've ever seen. Worthy to be even considered mainstream. Best design I've ever seen. It's clean. I like it. There. I said something nice. And then the Mad Joker. Oh, no. We're, we're back to the, the hot poo-poo. And the worst of them all. This Royal Diamond, this was approved April 26, 2023. I think most of these were approved April 26, 2023. And I honestly don't see anything wrong with the looks of the logos. Again, I just think they're a little too big. They do need to make them smaller. Um, yeah, not bad. I just, I don't know. Again, when you see these balls that are on the USBC approved list, you can't take it for gospel. It's the final product because they've all been sanded. So I'm really curious what this one's going to look like because it could look good, but right now as it does, it looks trash. All right. And then this last one, someone said, uh, hey, you know, here is this Black Pearl anchor. So I'm going back to the anchor thing, right? So first of all, I'm, they really need to get over their Johnny Depp, you know, thing because I guess they're in love with Pirates of the Caribbean and they keep making these fucking Black Pearl bowling balls and they're just the hottest trash ever. Like, False. No. 
anybody that knows anything about these companies knows that the the bloody ocean pearl was probably the best ball that they've come out with and they keep trying to they're coming out with these balls with that core and cover combination because that was a good core cover combination uh i won tournaments with that ball i had a regional title with swag balls so it's not like these balls are absolutely trash it's just they are a different type of look you've got to understand the type of motion you're getting and, and, and understand how to use them. This ball right here, um, the, the design behind these bowling balls, they want to bring back the bloody ocean pearl. And that's why they're doing this is so that way it's a swag ball. So it is PVA approved and able to be used in the PVA. So if this ball is anything like the bloody ocean pearl, it's going to make my bag because that ball had, it, that ball was special. I used that ball to compare against many other bowling balls when I was doing during the whole COVID lockdown thing. I used that ball to compare against a lot of down lane pearl bowling balls. The Bloody Ocean Pearl outperformed a lot of storm balls, a lot of Brunswick balls down lane. Uh, and, and it was just, it was that good of a ball. So I would disagree with him here. Um, I understand where he's going with it. But again, I think I disagree with that point up doing it nobody wants it um but if you are going to make it first of all um you're going to need to move that logo up and you need to put a fucking anchor out there like where is the anchor the black pearl anchor like you should be putting a gnarly anchor out there as a matter of fact you could just probably dis half of that logo and just put an anchor and it would look a lot better now that's just a lack of understanding the marketing and what they're trying to accomplish. They don't, they don't want to put an anchor there. It's just, that's like a subtitle to the ball. You know, like you don't make the anchor the main point because the main point is the black pearl because they want everybody to understand that it's the same cover and core as the bloody ocean. That's the whole point because that ball was so popular and that ball actually did make a splash, um, sold a bunch of those. So that, I mean, that that's the whole point behind that. You can't put a big old anchor on there and make it look completely different because then you're you're changing the marketing of the entire ball. The selection is terrible. The flyer is just, I mean, it's looking about as attractive as Madonna's face. Um, and of course, someone was like, what's up with these core designs? And I said, it looks like, and I actually um, blotted this out because it was pretty inappropriate. But if you think about, you know, something ugly revolving around someone's private parts. I'm sure you can put two and two together, but that is exactly what I think of these balls. Cores, they're like aliens. Just, oh, I mean, you couldn't pay me. Again, now we're still at a day and age where so many core designs have come out. You have to come up with something unique and still get the numbers to a point that, uh, to the numbers that you want, the RG, the diff, all that stuff. So uh, the core design you're basically trying to get to specific numbers and make the core look different than anything you've ever had before. That's really hard to do when there's already been so many core designs. And now, and a lot of companies are petty where they will sue other companies for using any type of core that looks anything like theirs, you know? So like there's a reason there hasn't been another diamond type core come out because lane one owns the diamond core from when they did the, uh, the buzz saw or the, you know, those bowling balls back in the day, he still owns the patent and the, I guess, what would it be the copyright or the trademark or whatever for that core. And so nobody can do anything that looks like a diamond. That's the hard part. So it, it's just coming out with cores that are going to be a little bit different, but still give you the values that you need to create the shapes of bowling balls that you want. Throw these I just I feel like I feel like there's just a lack of education when it comes to making videos like this. And that's OK. Not everybody's going to know all the stuff, but um, I don't like it. If you're going to bash on a company, at least know a little bit more about what you're talking about so we can understand or at least then you look like you have a little credibility. But and this isn't me bashing on him. This goes for anybody that thinks they're going to jump on and just start bashing a company. I don't like it. I think that I don't think it makes any sense to do that. Bowling ball. So that is what we got for today. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I always enjoy ragging. I didn't enjoy it, but it is what it is. We'll go ahead and get rid of that now. So, you know, I, I mean, it is what it is when it comes to the internet. People are going to do a lot of stuff. I get people that bash on me all the time. He might make a video bashing on me after this. Whatever. That's okay. 
Uh, I'm not too concerned about it, but I just want to make sure that people understand that, um, you know, like as far as my reviews and the things I'm going to say, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Just like I, I had some rough words for swag myself with certain things, but uh, hopefully when, you know, swag staffers see what I have to say or, uh, they see the reviews or any of the people who are creating the bowling balls see what I have to say. They take that and think, OK, well, maybe we do need to make a difference here or make a change here or something, you know. So um, not saying that I know everything. I'm just telling you what I can see, what I what I've witnessed myself from drilling these balls um, and watched as the balls have gone down the lanes when creating these re reviews and stuff. So uh, I can only tell you what I've got. So I'm not going to bash on any company or any person per se, but I will be completely honest with how I feel about bowling balls and what I see in them. So that's all I got for you. I kind of just wanted to run through this since everybody was tagging me and, and uh, sending me emails and stuff about this. So kind of wanted to just give you my opinion on it, kind of leave it at that. So I'm out of here. Make sure you guys, if you haven't already been over to 10 make sure to check that out. Sign up for the uh, the subscription over there. You get all kinds of value. I got a new book coming out about the release. And you can see the other books that I already have about the mental game and the approach. I'm going to keep coming out with books. I got a bunch of different ones in the works. Uh, release book should be done this week. So be on the lookout. But other than that, I'm out of here. And we will see you guys later.